Elizabeth Arden Cream. This one's wife. No shit, Sherlock. Duh. Yes. This one's wife once again demonstrating what a dimwit she is, and that she is so caught up in her self-absorption, she comes out with nonsensical twaddle. We're well versed in the word salad that she spills whenever she opens her mouth, that she casts around the fridge magnet platitudes, utilising phrases which are empty and meaningless, that she formulates in her own mind that she's a complete legend, whereas she's just a legend in her own lunchtime. Regularly, she sweeps into events, believing that she's there to dispense the wisdom of her brilliant mind, whilst most people that have got functioning brain cells just shake their heads and think, what the fuck did she actually say? That's meaningless. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Well, she's at it again, and this time providing more hilarity and the opportunity to ridicule this self-absorbed narcissist. It comes courtesy of Vanity Fair, but I know this material has popped up in a number of publications. And an article by Erin Vanderhoof tells us, Before anyone knew her as the Duchess of Sussex, Suits fans knew this one's wife for her role as Rachel Zane. The USA Network shows Rye <coughs> and Intelligent <coughs> fan favourite paralegal. Mirroring this one's wife's 2018 trip down the aisle and pivot to philanthropy, Rachel's storyline over seven seasons also ended with a wedding and a big job in a new city. Now a mother of two, this one's wife is setting her sights on the next phase of life as it appears on the small screen. The Duchess is teaming up with actor Gina Davis and Moms First, a long-time charity partner of the Archwell Foundation. So, once again, she's piggybacking off the work of other people, something that she does repeatedly, character trait acquisition. This time, that she's getting involved in, and get this, raising awareness about the ways television depicts characters who are mothers backed up by data gathered from programming across 2022. So, fathers, forget about that. The fact that you're invariably shown as incompetent in the kitchen and useless when it comes to matters of housekeeping, cleaning, or laundry, that doesn't matter. After all, Let's reinforce from a young age the notion that men are generally useless by showing in Peppa Pig how Daddy Pig is an expert on everything but generally fails at whatever he does, and then let's mock him for having a large stomach. Yes, this one's wife, of course, demonstrating once again her hypocrisy, whereby she always claims to represent women and advocate for them and empower them when she doesn't actually like women, and the only reason that she's got to where she's got in the world is because of men. Step forward, her father, Trevor Engelson, Corey the Chef, and Prince Harry. But that doesn't stand in the way of her attempting to preach at everybody. No, no, no. On Thursday, Moms First and the Gina Davis Institute on Gender in Media, sounds like a real barrel of laughs, shared the results of a study. Now, get this. I really hadn't understood this properly. I'm going to be the first to admit here. And you might think, goodness me, HG, are you going to admit that you are wrong. I thought your ilk never did that. But no, fair is fair. I think it's only appropriate for me to make the major admission of having not understood that I was incorrect about something, that I had got it wrong. I think it's only right, because apparently, according to the study, this tells us that portrayals on television don't always reflect reality. Well, shit 
me nay. That is a massive revelation for me. It really is. I've clearly fucked up because I honestly believe that William Shatner was both capable of captaining a spaceship and being a policeman. And the fact that really is an attractive woman with bouncing boobs and a rope that makes you tell the truth. That purple dinosaurs can talk and teach you useful life lessons. I always believed that there was a street in the United States where you could hang out with a large avine dude, shoot the breeze with a bin-dwelling grump, count with a vampire, watch a chef fall downstairs with freshly made desserts, and learn Spanish and English. I'm absolutely devastated to learn that perhaps that reality that I'd lived with isn't actually the reality. I also thought that if I was in a particular pickle, and as long as I could find them, there'd be a group of ex-military dudes with interesting names who would come and save me, and that if they would get shot at, they'd never get wounded, and whenever they blow up anybody else's car, the people just get out of it rubbing their heads, rather than suffering fractured limbs. I also believe that if you talk into the bottom of a phone, it equates to being a successful business person, and that there were things called wombles that pick up rubbish on Wimbledon Common in London. I didn't realise as well that it perhaps isn't the case that if the odds are against you, you could call a well-spoken Englishman and he might equalise them for you. And I always thought that one day I would be able to live with my friends, earning very little but afford a huge apartment in Manhattan and regularly hang out in a coffee shop. I can't believe that television is an actual reality. I think my world is falling apart. Imagine that. Gosh, thanks Gina and this one's wife for ensuring that a report was obtained to tell us that portrayals on television don't always reflect reality. No shit, Sherlock. Apparently, in light of this earth-shattering and ground-breaking knowledge, they argue that a change is necessary if we want to shift public attitudes and policy. The study, which was oddly enough funded by the Archwell Foundation, which means other people's donations paid for it, but this one's wife will claim the credit for it, found that though TV moms have become slightly more diverse, they are still underrepresented as earners and are still largely young, white, and thin. Gosh, yes, where have I been all along? I just thought that a mum was lived in the kitchen and that at the beginning of each day she had the time and the energy to produce a massive breakfast of fruit and toast and cold meats and cheeses and pancakes and syrups and cereals and orange juice, which everybody would then look at and go, can't stay, got to get on the bus. I thought that's what just mums did. Or occasionally they were seen comforting somebody. I never realised that mums actually had lives of their own and went out and did jobs. I never realised that they were surgeons and lawyers and teachers and pop stars and lollipop ladies. I didn't realise that they worked in stores or that they were scientists or that they could now undertake professional football. I just thought that they lived in the kitchen and occasionally took people to the park and to parties because that's what television said. I hadn't realised, and I'm sure you hadn't realised, that actually that's not reality. The article continues by patronisingly telling us that in 2022, when a couple with kids under 18 had a clear breadwinner, they were male 86.5% of the time. The study found that childcare and the realities of keeping a house running are largely erased. In an interview with Vanity Fair, Davis says she was surprised by how dated the various portrayals of TV moms seemed. The representation of motherhood seemed like such a throwback, she says. It didn't reflect modern reality anywhere near as closely as I hoped or imagined. Ah, oh, does that mean, therefore, that when I go outside, there isn't going to be a TIE fighter that I can climb into? Bugger! In a statement, this one's wife explained her reasoning for signing on to the project. I'm vastly unpopular, and I'm doing anything I can to make me seem popular. I don't know what I'm talking about most of the time, but I just spew out this word salad in the expectation that it makes me sound good, she said. I beg your pardon. She said, my past experience as an actress, and now today as a producer of what? Shite and mother, 
what? You're never with your kids. I've amplified, ooh, new word for her, amplified, my belief in the critical importance of supporting women and mums, both behind the lens and in front of it, she said. This report about the portrayal of mothers in entertainment highlights the gaps we need to fill to achieve true representation in the content we create and consume. I'm honoured to support this work through the Archwell Foundation. So, you've discovered that television portrayals of mothers isn't like the reality. So, what are we going to actually have now? Are you just going to put on some television programmes that shows a mother getting up, making breakfast, caring for the kids, putting on the laundry, going out doing your day's work and coming back, then helping with the homework, cooking dinner. Hmm? We know that women do all of these things. And we also know that men do these things too. But, hey, make lots of television programs about that. I'm sure they're going to be a success. After all, it's not like... We've seen a succession of trailblazing women in television over the years, have we? It wasn't the case that Lucy Ricardo stood up to her husband repeatedly in I Love Lucy and that she had all of these dreams which she pursued with passion. It wasn't the case that we saw Lois Lane who sh demonstrated her commitment to truth and justice and the American way of journalism as being the girlfriend of the Man of Steel. And, of course, we can forget about Nancy Drew. I mean, it wasn't the case that she was a leading detective, was she? Or forget about Lieutenant Uhura in Star Trek. Hmm? Nichelle Nichols' presence on the 1960s sci-fi series, we'll just overlook that. She wasn't trailblazing at all. I mean, after all, not only was she female, but she was also black in a major role in a major series. But we'll just put that to one side. We don't really need to care about that. No, all of these things, they're completely irrelevant, aren't they, in terms of trailblazing women? Claire Huxtable in The Cosby Show. What about Captain Janeway in Star Trek Voyager? A, a woman captaining a spaceship. Lisa Simpson's in The Simpsons as well. She's been around for years, and she's too tall for brainiacs everywhere. You had Roseanne. She had a show to herself, and that was a realistic portrayal of a working-class family. What about Dana Scully in The X-Files? Hmm? Whip-smart, hyper-logical, a measured purveyor of science? Yeah. Ally McBeal as well. She was labelled a trailblazer as a consequence of the fact that, although she wore a heart on her sleeve, she wanted to have the perfect job and the perfect man. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Hmm? Come on. Kicked ass. Left, right, and centre. Temperance Brennan in Bones. What about Betty Suarez in Ugly Betty? Penny Olsen in Mad Men. What about Leslie Nope in Parks and Recreation? Olivia Pope in Scandal. There's so many women, and I'm sure many more, come to mind as you're listening to me speak about all of this, that were trailblazers and that have portrayed women in roles which weren't archetypal housewives and caregivers. It is just so ridiculous of this idiot woman to decide that she's going to sign up to something to tell us something that we already knew, but also completely missing the bus. There might be some degree of underrepresentation, but it's not like there's no representation. And the way that she goes on is as if to suggest that women don't have any positive portrayal whatsoever in television. Apparently, in the past, the Institute has looked at subjects including diversity in media, gender stereotypes on screen, and the industry's approach to mental health. And the result of the Institute's studies have had an effect on industry opinions. But their look into TV motherhood, they teamed up with Moms First to achieve an even broader impact. Archwell signed on as an early donor. Since then, the organisation, that's the... Mums First, has been lobbying to pass paid leave policies and push for reform to the nation's broken childcare system. The report notes that only 15% of TV parents are ever shown doing domestic work like cooking or cleaning. Well, that's because most people are involved in cooking and cleaning, and the last thing that they want to watch is more cooking and cleaning. Still, less than 10% of TV parents had a messy home. For fuck's sake... 
these people really think that you're all idiots, that you're not capable of working out that it's just television, it's an idealized way of looking at the world, that you realize that life's not like that, that we have those various tropes that we laugh about in TV world because we recognize that they don't represent reality. Apparently, this one's wife was thanked for the work she's done since the pandemic to support the charity and make issues like paid leave a central part of her platform. Really? She wrote a letter which she sent to two people and she hasn't done anything since. She had a line she would say, and I always steal it from her, the most important title I have is Mother, Sajuani says. I think that's the person that runs Moms First. The one ask is to show our multidimensionality. What the fuck is that? Show us both as mums and workers. Don't just show one or the other. Show us as we are, both. There are plenty of programmes that show people as mums and workers. But nevertheless, whilst of course this is well-intentioned, the fact is that once again, this one's wife gets involved in something to make her look good, spouts some word salad, but it's actually something that's just preposterous. Fancy that. Did you know that what you watch on television may not be an accurate representation of reality? I think you're all going to go and have to have a lie down after being delivered that monumental news. And it's hardly a surprise that a dipshit narcissist such as this one's wife would be involved in telling the world, guess what? Television isn't reality. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.